All right, let's jump in with today's video, the January 2023 pickups video for Happy Beard Games. We're covering all the games that I bought in January. We've got a focus on Japanese Sega Saturn games from two different stores, as well as one extra game for the GameCube that I actually bought in February, but I just bought it, so it's like the very start of the month, so I'm throwing that one in. And then we've also got my pickups from My Nintendo Rewards, which are not really games, but they're definitely related to games. So let's jump in with all these pickups right here on Happy Beard Games. All right, we're jumping in now with pickups right here in Happy Bird Games. We've got games from the store RetroGamesJapan.com, which I highly recommend. You check out their website. They also have a store, and they also have an eBay page. Now, these were bought from their eBay page, so Retro Games Japan is the store. Um, with the first game being Vampire Hunter Darkstalker's Revenge. We already covered this on a Famicom Friday not too long ago. Here's the case. I'll have some close-ups of the case and some of the manual and art. If you want more information about this game, just go ahead and check out the Famicom Friday video I did on it, because we covered the entire arcade mode, plus more. We also did a little bit of translating on that video, too, for the end scene as Sasquatch, where I beat the game with the character Sasquatch. But here it is in the Japanese Sega Saturn. Now, um, North American Sega Saturns have a long tall boxes cases, uh, so they have tall cases. In Japan, Sega Saturn games have uh, basically a CD or a PlayStation 1 original style uh, for their case. So they have a basic CD-ROM CD style case. Um, whereas in North America they have a taller case. And also, like, you know, the artwork might be different here and there. Uh, one thing I noticed about the Japanese Sega Saturn games is usually they'll have the text in Japanese on the side and English on the other side, which is handy for if you're sorting your games you can still kind of know what game it is, or what game it is, um, just by flipping it to the English side if you want to. And this is a game that, by the way, um, has like very little in the needs of translation. You can pretty much just jump in and play it right away. Uh, it's a really cool fighting game. It's similar in style to Street Fighter, which I also have Street Fighter Alpha 2 on the Saturn. Um, it's a lot of fun to play this game, and I highly recommend it. If you want more information, once again, check out the Famicom Friday video. It'll tell you everything about it. The next game is the subject of our upcoming Famicom Friday, and this is a game from Retro Games Japan once again. So this is Slayer's Royal. Slayer's Royal is based on an anime called Slayer's that was very popular in the 90s. Um, I haven't figured out how to play this game just yet, but I'm still working on that um, currently. Uh, this is like the next video that I'm working on pretty much, is a game, uh, is a video based on this game. Now this game is, and I have played it before, um, it's a Japanese exclusive to Sega Saturn and PlayStation 1, I believe it's the PlayStation 1 version 2. Uh, it's really cool, you'll understand more about it when we get into the video later on about it. Uh, it has really nice anime cutscenes, it has a nice art style, it has like a thing where you like point and click and navigate a town. But the battles in it, and it's a fantasy style RPG once again, but the battles in it are turn based tactical RPG battles. Um, you might think of like Final Fantasy Tactics, stuff like that. Um, it's pretty cool. It has its own, a little bit different style than Tactics, but it's pretty much similar to a Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, and it plays with all the characters that you know and love from the anime Slayers. Slayers Royal for the Japanese uh, Sega Saturn. Pretty cool. Uh, the disc is actually in the console right now. Next game is a good one. A classic. Sega Rally. I was looking at what is the best racing game for the Sega Saturn. A lot of times I was thinking of Daytona USA. This one came up as a, a close one, but I think this one is actually supposed to be a little bit better than Daytona USA. I don't know if that's true or not, because I really remember having fun with Daytona. Um, but this one usually comes in first on many lists of top racing games for the Sega Saturn. Uh, and I thought it would be fun to check it out. So this is Sega Rally Championship, 1995, or just Sega Rally if you want to call it that. Um, but Sega Rally is uh, one of the first, or maybe the first, Sega Sports game with that Sega Sports logo on it. Um, it's a racing game, looks like it's got two player split screen. Uh, I played it briefly, but not too much. You'll have some gameplay video of it on this video as well, because I did play it briefly. I haven't done a video on it separately from this video though. Um, but it's pretty cool. It's a uh, it's a little bit challenging, arcadey racer, um, a lot of time trials, 
uh, you know, versus races. Um, it has 3D graphics, full 3D graphics, which is pretty impressive for 1995 or 96, whenever it might have came out. So it's 94, 95 on the back for a copyright, so maybe 95. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. It's, it's a fun game. I, I want to check it out in a later video where I actually play it for you, but um, yeah, Sega Rally is pretty cool. Unless I'm mistaken, the last game that I got from Retro Games Japan was this game that we've covered in a past Famicom on Friday. This is a game called Battle Athletus Dian Dokai, or Dian Dukai, however you want to pronounce that. Um, and it's based on an anime series from the 90s in Japan. Uh, we played it pretty fully for like an hour or more on one of my recent Family Come Fridays and it's mainly a visual novel. There might be some action scenes in it. There's some training. You can do some like weight training, athletic training, but it's all like just menus and it's all like visual novel style. Um, it's got a very good anime art style in it too and uh, it's just it's kind of interesting. I want to play more of it. I want to learn more about it, but um, it's just, uh, it's a basically a visual novel, so it's not super exciting to see a, um, like a Let's Play or a video on it, really, so I probably won't ever do a video on it again, but I do want to check it out some more in my own time. That's Battle Athletus, uh, or Battle Athletus Dian Dukai. Um, now this game actually came in pretty good condition. It's got the game disc and the full case. It's also got this, um... Registration card, which I show all this in the actual Famicom Friday video of it. And then also has this, which is like when you go and you're at the store and you get the game first, it has this like slip thing on the end. I have that. So that's pretty cool. I have a couple games for the Sega Saturn in Japan that actually included that little sidebar. You might see more of that in the, last, in the later part of this video. Well, that was it for my pickups from Retro Games Japan. Uh, really cool, really cool trusted seller. I, I really uh, appreciate all the effort they go into keeping their packaging clean and nice. And um, there's always a lot of bubble wrap. It's always very safe and sturdy inside their packages. And that's also where I bought my Japanese Sega Saturn from, which also is in excellent condition. And I just really like that store. I've gone to them in the past for Famicom, Super Famicom, and other games uh, and controllers and stuff like that. So I really highly recommend RetroGamesJapan.com. Here's another store that I also really recommend, which is Super Smash Video Games in Olympia, Washington. Now this is a store that I went to physically, I walked there. It's not something that I bought online. Uh, and I found some Japanese region Sega Saturn games, so I picked them all up right away. Uh, the first one is one, the only one of these that I've actually played for a brief amount of time, um, is this first one. This is a game called Zero Four Champ Doozy Dash J Type R. So yeah, Zero Four Champ Doozy J Type R. What could that possibly be? Well, there's a car on it, so I assume you might assume it's a racing game. I think it's more of like a car mechanic simulator. It's a little bit like a visual novel. Uh, it's very anime style in its art and characters. Um, there's a lot of emphasis on like cars, getting car parts, building car parts. Um, there is a little bit of story to it, so it's got that role-playing element to it, but it's not like a you know an RPG really. Um, I think there is some kind of racing in this at some point, uh, but from what I've played, which was very brief, uh, it's mainly like you go to like garages and stuff like that, and there's like some kind of car equipment thing. Um, looks like you can get parts to upgrade your cars and stuff like that, but I don't really know too much about it. But we'll check that out in a later video. Uh, this was $8 at Super Smash Games Olympia, and I'm just happy that I found a Japanese region Sega Saturn game there. I, when I went there um, yesterday uh, for another part of this pickups, um, there wasn't hardly any Sega Saturn games there for the Japanese region Sega Saturn. There's actually only like one or two um, currently. So I'm glad I got these games when I did, and I picked them up when I did. The next game, I think these were all actually $8 each, so that was $8. This is eight dollars as well. This one I don't know too much about, but it's a dual, dual case which can hold up to four discs. But in this case, it only hold not this case. <laughs> it only holds one or two discs in it for some reason. It only comes with two discs, even though it could have been a four disc case. And this is a game that looks like that inside. Um, this is a game that has a, a little cool little collectible, which is a sticker. comes in the back part of the case for the second disc. 
Now this game is developed by uh, publisher or developer IMAX, not to be confused with the actual IMAX leaders, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's something else. Um, it doesn't have like the English on the side, so I don't know what it's called. It's called Bakuretsu Hunter, or Bakuretsu Hunters, is what it says on the UPC code. So Bakuretsu Hunters, I don't know anything about it. We might check it out in a future family on Friday, we probably will. Uh, it looks cool, the artwork, artwork looks great. Now, Bakuretsu Hunters, I don't know anything about. It could be based on an anime like the other games I have, but it could be an original game. It could be an RPG, I don't know. On the back, it shows a few screenshots. It looks like a slot machine, but with a two-disker, I don't think it's just a slot machine game. I think there's more to it than that. I thought there was a lot of cutscenes. I'm not sure. Um, I don't really know anything about this game so far, but we might cover it in a future fan on Friday. This last game was once again also $8, and it's called Wizards Harmony. So Wizards Harmony is a game that I also don't know anything about. It could be some kind of, I'm, I'm assuming it's some kind of gotcha simulator, like, because on the front it shows like a crane game machine hand picking up different characters, and this guy's got like all these little chibi anime uh, characters just sitting around in like their dolls in like a crane game machine. So maybe it has some kind of gotcha mechanics. I don't know. Um, it looks like it has a lot of menus on the back, but I don't know anything about the actual gameplay. Um, but yeah, so here's what the disc looks like. This is one of those games that also comes with the side label thing. If anyone knows what that's actually called, let me know because I don't know what the actual term for it is. It's like a side card that goes on there when it's shrink wrapped. And then you can, some people have actually saved it and put it into the case, which is cool. So a couple games that I have from here and there do have them in the case. But I just wanted to pick this up because it's a Japanese version of Sega Saturn game. I thought it'd be fun to check it out on a Famicom Friday. Even though I know nothing about it currently, we might find out more about it in the future and it could be kind of fun. So that was it for my pickups from Super Smash Video Games in Olympia, Washington. You know I've talked about them before. I really like their store. It's very clean, easy to find games inside, very well organized. I feel like recently they reorganized so like um, they have an even better expansion of games. Um, and selection of games. It's always very clean and organized in there. The staff is friendly and nice. And um, I just think that's cool that they have imported games there too. Um, so with that, I actually have one more thing for Super Smash games. This was all in January. All this stuff was all my January pickups. I have one game that I picked up when I went there yesterday. Um, because I actually recorded this video like a while ago. And then I realized it was way too long. So we're trying to make a shorter version today. <laughs> So I got one more game, and that was uh, from the GameCube, Power Rangers Dino Thunder, which is a Power Rangers series that I know nothing about. Um, I've been doing this Power Rangers review video, or working on it loosely for the past year and um, or so, and this might not be in that video, but if that video is successful, I can do a follow-up video with even more Power Rangers games. Now, just, just to know the status of that Power Rangers review, you've probably heard me talk about it here and there. Um, it's almost done. I just need to get up and do the video. So, like, I've, I've done, like, all the gameplay recordings. I have all these Power Rangers games that I've beaten and fully recorded, and I know a lot about. Um, the only problem is I haven't done the actual review. I have the script, I just haven't done the actual video part of the review, and it's not going to take that long. It's just, um, I need to go do it and not get distracted. Um, so that's the status of my Power Rangers review. And then after that one, maybe we'll get to this game, which is Power Rangers Dino Thunder for the GameCube. Which I didn't even know there was a Power Rangers game on the GameCube. I picked this up for $10. It looks like it's in very, very good condition. Uh, it's got the manual and the disc. Everything's like spotless and it looks really like clean for like a GameCube game. Like it's not dirty or anything. Like not even the outside of the case. It looks like it's almost new. It's kind of like eerily new. It's like I'm stepping back in time. I've never heard of this game either, which is weird. It's like, I've, I was a big GameCube fan. That was my go-to console at the time. Um, but I never heard of this. I heard of, like, I had Zoids. I had Zoids. I had Robotech. Um, I didn't have any... I didn't even know there was any Power Rangers games at the time. So that's kind of cool. Um, 50 different missions, 9 worlds, 18 different Zords. You can switch between Zords and mid-mission. Awesome Megazord battles. This is sounding like you don't really play as the Rangers themselves, you play as the Megazords mainly in this. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but that's what it's sounding like. 
And either way, Power Rangers is awesome, so we're going to check this out someday. I don't know when, but probably after that review. Alright, so that was it for my pickups for January 2023. We've got a little bit more. Those are all the game pickups. Now, if you've heard of the website My Nintendo Rewards, you know that they frequently restock and change out their rewards with newer rewards here and there. And you can use your Platinum Nintendo points to buy those rewards, essentially. So Platinum points have been recently made easier to get, like extremely easier to get, because you can do Platinum Rewards missions on your Nintendo Switch console that are very easy to do, just like you boot up a game and you get like 200 points. So I had like 2,000 My Nintendo points, so I used them to buy four different My Nintendo rewards recently, which means all you do is you spend those Platinum points on the rewards, and that, which was about 2,000 points, and then uh, you pay like $7, I think, uh, shipping and handling to get it all delivered in one order. So what I'd highly recommend doing is if you're going to do that, don't do it for just one, unless you can only really afford or only want one. Uh, do it for like a bundle. Do Get like four games, and that way you're saving, you know, all the shipping that you have for each individual one, and just doing all the shipping at one time. Additionally, you can buy things from the Nintendo store, like just regular stuff, um, and it'll combine with that order. So basically, like, you can buy something you want on Nintendo's website and get the Platinum points for the My Nintendo stuff and have them shipped in the same box, which is cool to do. And if you spend more than $50 on there, you get free shipping, which I didn't do that this time, but I just got the My Nintendo rewards. And there's one extra one, which I'll show you real quick. This is an extra one from a reward that I got recently and I just realized I never opened it, so somehow I got mixed in. This was the recent game Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope, which I still need to pick up. And this is a keychain featuring a character from that game. Now, Mario and Rabbids, the first one, was really cool. I really loved the first Mario and Rabbids game. Uh, I beat it on the Switch, and I pretty much did almost everything in the game. I didn't finish the DLC yet, but I did finish the main game, so it's really cool. Uh, I do want to check out the sequel, but here is a character keychain that they had on my Nintendo. Uh, additionally, this is the actual order one from January. Here is another keychain. There's a lot of keychains on there. Uh, this is a Kirby keychain, and it's actually like, I think it's like, um, it's like actually hard plastic or soft plastic. And it comes with a little lanyard too, for the keychain with Kirby characters on it. We're going to open that real quick. Uh, it looks like I can't really take it off without scissors, but we're going to open that real quick. Okay. So it's blank in the back. It is like a soft, kind of rubbery plastic to it. Uh, it's Kirby with a strawberry and, oh, it's two strawberries. Kirby and two strawberries. Keychain, really cool. And a little lanyard with different Kirby characters attached to a keychain. This is from the game Kirby's Dream Buffet for Nintendo Switch. Really cool little keychain to have. I always love some Kirby stuff. The next one is um, from the game uh, Earthbound, also known as Mother 2 in Japan, Earthbound for the Super Nintendo. Uh, this is a character from Earthbound, and it's really surprising to see Earthbound merchandise or collectibles. Not only, like, is there, like, uh, not hardly any Earthbound collectibles out there for North American region. It's just weird that they would put them on my Nintendo without any, like, like, reason. Like, Kirby and Mario Rabbids, they had a recent game for them, if that makes sense. But Earthbound, it's like, it's been on there for a while. And the game's been out for so, since the Super Nintendo. So it's just random Earthbound stuff. I had to get it. This is a luggage tag featuring a character from Earthbound. And on the back comes a thing where you can write your name and put it into a, a sleeve on the back of it. So you have a luggage tag. And it has a little keychain on it too. Now this one was shrink wrapped, but I took off the shrink wrap because it was like, had sticky stuff on it and it was falling apart. Um, but this was also a reward from that same order. This is from Earthbound Beginnings, which is technically the first Earthbound game, aka Mother or Mother One. Uh, it's just a book. It's basically just like a notebook that you can just draw in or write in. Uh, so it's just a book. It's it's pretty big though. It's bigger than you might expect. Here, let's give you a little comparison. 
Here's an average CD case. Here's the Earthbound book. Now in this book, it relates to the video game too because there's pages in it. Um, I guess in the game there's something about musical notes or writing music scores. Um, so here's some sheet music paper you can uh, have for the first few pages of the book. There's sheet music. Uh, and then there's some images throughout of different characters and icons from this game for the Nintendo Famicom. Uh, this was an original Famicom, not a Super Nintendo, Super Famicom game, like its sequel that's more popular, Earthbound. But they retitled it, when they finally put it in North America, they retitled it as Earthbound Beginnings. And I haven't played this game at all, I played Earthbound a little bit, uh, but not Earthbound Beginnings. So here's a little collectible from that. Now our final My Nintendo reward today is this one, a calendar for 2023. Um, let's just check it out real quick. I've gotten one of these every year since My Nintendo started doing them. They're just like calendars um, that are on cards. Pretty cute, there's Pikmin right there. And then you open it and there's a Triforce. And there's some other characters like a blooper, or not blooper, um, a Splatoon guy. Okay, so it comes out like this. You've got Mario hats on the background. Um, you've got a little calendar right here. Then you've got this, which is a stand that you can fold out into a stand to hold up the calendar. It's a desk calendar. Let's just take a look. Oh, they actually made it a little bit better than last time, I think. I think last time they were blank on the back. I'm not sure about that. Here's what it looks like. There's like there's Mario for January, and it has the calendar dates right there. But on the back of that card, it shows even more Mario characters and an actual like day-to-day -day calendar. I think last year it was just like this side. I could be wrong about that. I don't remember. But um, so let's just look. We've got Mario, we've got Link, we've got Splatoon. Pikmin, Animal Crossing, uh, Splatoon 3, more Pikmin characters, Bowser, uh, more Animal Crossing characters, got Zelda, more Pikmin, and the Mario Gang. Pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, everybody, that was it for my pickups from January 2023. We checked out everything that I got from Retro Games Japan, Super Smash Games Olympia, as well as the My Nintendo Rewards program. It was pretty cool. Got a lot of cool stuff for the Sega Saturn, uh, the Nintendo GameCube, and My Nintendo Rewards. Awesome. All right, everybody, thanks for watching once again. Please stay tuned to Haggy Beard Games for more classic gaming goodness and pickups videos and more. All right, remember you can check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Donate on my coffee page. You can leave me a like here comment subscribe and share it with your friends thank you all right everybody thanks for watching once again bye